Hello and welcome back here to Mohawk College Varsity Basketball. I'm Cody Lake alongside Steve Baxter and we're here as the varsity men's basketball team looks to take on Niagara Knights here. And Baxter, what are the keys to the game in your eyes? Uh, well, first of all for Mohawk College, they need to force jump shots. Niagara isn't that good of a jump shooting team. Their percentages are a little bit lower than the average. So if they can make Niagara shoot some like 15 footers and outside of that, they should be okay. Uh, as for Niagara, uh, they need to shake off the rust because it was just Christmas. I think this is their first game back since the Christmas break, yes. if I'm not mistaken. So, I mean, they're gonna have to shake off the rust basically. Two big holes here in the Mohawk lineup as we look down. Jordan Martin and Frank Benet, both out of the lineup tonight. Uh, for undisclosed reasons and we don't know why we're just hoping that they're okay and hoping that Mohawk can uh, still control this game without two of their bigger players and the last um, the last home game that Mohawk had Frank Benet was a very important piece to that win that they had yeah Makuna grabbed a lot of points as well but Benet was probably the biggest part to that win so for him to be out of this, for him to be out of the lineup, and for Jordan Martin, a huge assist guy for Mohawk, for him to be out of the lineup as well, it's going to be difficult. And we're going to see how uh, how they change their game plan here and try and switch it up. Game's about to start. Um, back in October, Ni Niagara actually beat Mohawk College. Uh, so I mean, Mohawk is definitely going to want to get some revenge for that. Yeah, unlike the girls who beat the Knights, the guys were. Uh, we're not as lucky, and they'll be looking to make it one out of two here if they can win tonight. As we get ready for the tip-off. The bells are ringing here. The bells are ringing. And here we go. And Mohawk wins the tip. Oh, In the very first shot of the game, Lamar Barr tries to go up for the layup. And we got Kevin Cooper of Niagara with the massive block. <laughs> Niagara inbounds the ball. Levi Makuna being told he's going to be taking on Lamar Barr, the big asset here for Mohawk. He's, yeah. he's got under control of him on this game, so far at least. And we have Jordan McDonald of Niagara putting up a jump shot and the air balls it, gets the offensive rebound and still can't make the layup. We have Lamar Barr coming down the floor and the strong take, a very strong take by Emmanuel Makuna with the and one. Oh. It would have been an and one, but it turns out they called the foul on the floor. Push on the floor. Lamar Barr passes it in, and he misses the three. Gets it back, and he misses the three. So we have Niagara coming up now with the fast break. Van Hutchison Jr. of Niagara tried to sneak it into the post, but couldn't quite get it. Mohawk steals it. They're now swinging the ball around, trying to get a shot off. And a huge three. Braden Lenters of Mohawk with the drills the three from three feet deep. You don't see him hit many of those, but geez, he looked pretty fluent on that one. Yeah. He, I mean, he's a big man, but if you leave him open, he's not going to be afraid to shoot that shot. Of course not. Niagara Call is just trying to get something going here. Missed a 17-foot missed a jumper and then missed a three-point. Tipped off a of Mohawk. Niagara College ball on the baseline. Let's see if they can get their first points of the game right here. Inbound pass to Niagara College's 33, Jordan McDonald. 
who misses the jump shot. But then we had Van Hutchison with the put back too. Mohawk College. Passes it to Lamar Barr. Drives into the post, dishes it back. Two seconds on the shot clock. High arcing shot. And Braden Lenters cannot hit that last second shot. So we have Niagara with the ball now. Seven minutes and 40 seconds left in this first quarter. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Niagara swinging the ball. We have age. Sorry, Van Hutchison Jr. of Niagara putting up a three. And it just barely grazes the front row. Johnny Richardson bringing the ball up now for Niagara. Passes it to Levi Makuna. And almost a putback slam there by Niagara's Kevin Cooper. But Mohawk gets it. And Dace. And a fast break there by Niagara College. Kevin Cooper with the slam down at the other end. Niagara leads the game four to three now. Yeah, and a quick turnaround for Niagara as they weren't hitting anything to start this game, but luckily they didn't take too much damage on the oh. defensive side either. <laughs> Here we go. Braden Lenters kicks it out. Lamar Barr for three, and he just can't quite hit it. But then there's a tip in. Braden Lenters with the offensive board. Niagara with the fast break there. Lamar Barr with the hard foul, so that Jordan McDonald cannot hit the, the layup. Jordan McDonald going to the free throw line for two shots here. And we have Jordan McDonald converting on only one of those free throws. So Mohawk has possession of the ball and a nice pump fake. Very nice pump fake by Ramel Kalura. Gets his man to bite on the pump fake but just can't hit the jumper after. And there looked to be a pretty big shoulder by Jordan McDonald there on Lamar Barr but there's no call. Mohawk with the ball now, kicking it out into the corner. And they say that Braden Lenters steps on the sideline for an out of bounds. Doesn't look like he agrees with that too much, but Niagara basketball. Levi Makuna. Passes it to Johnny Richardson, who gives it into the post to Jordan McDonald who misses his first attempt and misses his second attempt. So Mohawk fast breaking now. Ramel Kamora with a deep three and he drills that three. Wow, after calling for the screen, that he must, goes up that, and sinks it. That must have been at least four feet deep, at least. Johnny Richardson with the ball. Dishing it over to Van Hutchison Jr. Puts up a layup, air ball. But Jordan McDonald with the tough offensive rebound and gets the put back. This game's tied at 8-8. Eight, eight, four minutes and 50 seconds left in this first frame. Lamar Barr with the ball up at the top. He gets trapped. Lift. We have Kalura. We had Kalura driving to the baseline and looked for the dish off to Lamar Barr, but he got called for a travel here. Substitutions being made. Of Danny Lacoli subbing in. It seems like Mo... Oh, 
It seems like Mohawk has been having some really good ball movement there to hit Van Hutchison Jr. for the baseline slam. Neil Santos tries to give it to Lamar Barr. It's stolen by Van Hutchison Jr. He tries to go up for the layup, misses, gets his own put back, and he makes his own layup. That's a very nice hustle play by Hutchison Jr. And a good job not to get the travel call there as he was rolling in real hot. Oh, just yeah. And barely got that first shot up. Santos dishes it off to Kalua, who misses the three. Santos. Santos gave it to Roman Calero, but he couldn't hit the three from the corner. So we have Niagara coming down. Levi Makuna. And another tough offensive rebound by Jordan McDonald. Niagara is just, seems to be killing Mohawk on the rebounds right now. And Santos putting in the tough layup and one. Neil Santos with the tough take. And we have two substitutions coming in. And we have a John Dalmage coming in for Adrian and Chona. Looking back now at how these teams uh, line up here tonight, Niagara is on a three-game win streak. And they're looking at an 8-3 and three record here. So they've really picked it up in the second half of this season. They're looking to continue their success against the Mohawk Mountaineers here tonight. Yeah, and, and Mohawk is the team that needs the win. They're 7-6 and six right now. And th this would just be a perfect game for them to win. Mohawk, Mountaineers, and the Niagara Knights are very big rivals when it comes to sports. Going back years and years and years. Yeah, so obviously they're not going to like each other. The coaches probably aren't going to like each other. Yeah. There's going to be some bad blood throughout, and they're going to want those those points even more. They mean even more whenever you look back at the schedule. Yeah, I was just going to say, like, there is going to be some bad blood. There has already been some mead mugging out on the court tonight. And a couple of little shoves going back and forth. Yeah, the fouls have been a little bit hard. Haven't you noticed that? Yeah. Oh, look at Mo. Mo the Hawk enjoying himself as always. This guy looks like he has so much fun. Sixteen seconds left in this quarter break. It is ten Mohawk ten Niagara twelve. Three minutes left in this first frame. And this is a very entertaining game so far. Oh, yeah, very high-paced. A little bit different than the women's game that was briskly and, played through the first and half. two dunks already. Yeah. No one's going to be upset with those. No. No, sir. Going back to play now. And the ball is back in play. Dolmage kicks the ball out of bounds. It will remain Niagara basketball. Hutchison Jr. inbounding the ball for Niagara. And he gives it to De Devontae Bennett. And a perfect trap there by Mohawk College. Fast break. And Emmanuel Makuna misses the free throw, but Neil Santos right behind him to back him up. And Mohawk being caught off guard on defense there. And we had Kevin Cooper of Niagara come in for the fast break slam. No one within it, probably five feet. Yeah, Cooper's, Cooper's been really high on his feet tonight, uh, so far at least. He's been really quick to the ball. Yeah. And he's a very tall and long guy. I can see him being a key part of the rebounding and their defensive capabilities. 
on the offensive side of the ball, though, Niagara's going to be looking for Van Hutchinson Jr. to pro produce something. He's got 188 points up to this point in the season, and he's been doing very, very, very well. Manuel Makuna at the free throw line. Can he convert on the first? And he cannot. Just, just shaking his head in disappointment on that one. He knows he should have hit it. And he does make the second one. Mohawk running a half-court press. Niagara breaks it pretty easily, though, and almost. And it wasn't almost. It was a turnover by Niagara College. The ball got tipped off a Mohawk player and then tipped again off a Niagara player. Levi Makuna coming back on here for Niagara. He's been very noticeable so far here to start the first quarter. Yes, he has. Don't let his small frame deceive you. He's very quick, and he does have some very good hops for his size. And a strong take down low by Niagara's Jor Jordan McDonald. That was a very nice drop step. Went through two Mohawk Mountaineers and still somehow made the layup. So we have Makuna dribbling the ball at the top, trying to find a man. Finally finds Kalura. And Kalura does a spin move, trying to get by his man. Tough take. And we have Kevin Cooper coming in with a huge block. And then we have Devontae Bennett of Niagara trying to charge in, puts his shoulder down. And Neil Santos gets the offensive foul. That was very good defensive play by Santos. Seems like he was just waiting for him to come in there. One minute and 11 seconds left in this first frame. Santos bringing the ball up for Mohawk. Gets two screens. And he dishes it off to Adrian Achonwa. And he makes the easy layup. 16 for Niagara, 15 for Mohawk. One point game. 47 seconds left in this first frame. We had a missed three by Levi Makuna. But it's easily put back by Kevin Cooper. So we have Santos up at the top, trying to find a man. Finally finds Brendan Lenters, who goes in. And Cooper again with another block. Niagara retains possession. 20 seconds left. And there's an alley-oop that was being thrown. Went a little bit too high for Kevin Cooper. Yeah, I mean, focusing a little bit too much on the pretty play there, not going for the... For the sure bucket. I mean, he's pretty tall, but he's not Yao Ming tall. No, no. <laughs> so we have Santos bring the ball up now. 15 seconds left. Let's see if Mohawk can get a last second bucket here. If they can get a three, then they'll be tied going into the second quarter. Five seconds left. Four seconds. Three, two, one. And Santos does get it off in time and almost almost hits the buzzer beater going into the second frame. What a first quarter. Very entertaining. Niagara Knights 18, Mohawk Mountaineers 15. Three-point game. Yeah, very close to that first quarter there as we take a look at some highlights now and some of the action that was definitely on display. Kevin, man, Kevin Cooper is... Like I said earlier in the first quarter, is going to be such a huge key to this game. It seems like he's taller than everybody else, and his length is unmatched. When you go and block Lamar Barr in the first, like, 35 seconds of the game, you're setting a statement right there. And not even a block. We're talking about a two-hand pin yeah. on the backboard. Mohawk is going to have to try to get something going. Yeah, they're not too far behind by no means. They're still definitely, they're just one shot away. It's only one uh, possession game still, but they definitely don't want 
to let like they don't want Niagara to continue to get more comfortable and comfortable in this game as they're starting to seem like they really they're starting to figure out Mohawk possibly. Another key to the game is that Niagara has to stop uh, Mohawk colleges, mainly their key player in Lamar Barr, which they have been doing. Yeah, he's only put up one shot, Baxter, and he missed that. So you look at that versus Van Hutchinson Jr., the best player arguably for the Knights, and he's four for eight, which isn't great, but he's still he's put up eight points so far, and he's had th uh, four offensive rebounds. So he's definitely made his statement as well. Yeah, He's just going to have to keep the turnovers down a little bit more. He, he's been playing really well, but he's got the three turnovers, so just trying to cut that down a little bit. For Mohawk, we have Neil Santos, who's two for three. He's got four points, per, very efficient. And then we also have Adrian Achona, who's one for one. Ramel Kalura, on the other hand, for Mohawk, is shooting a one for eight. Not very well, so he's going to have to pick it up. Just starting the second frame now. 18 to 15 for, Mohawk, er, for Niagara College. Niagara has the ball. Swinging it around now at the top. Devontae Bennett puts up a three. Can't quite make it. Mohawk gets the rebound. Now we have Makuna. Up at the top. Calling a play. Gets a screen to the left side. Makuna puts up a three. And it's a little bit short. I think it just grazed the rim there. And now... We have Danny Lacoli coming in for Niagara. His first shot is a missed three. Lamar Barr. Lamar Barr with the turnover. But then we have another turnover on Levi Makuna of Ni Niagara with the travel. Emmanuel Makuna now, again, at the top. Trying to find Barr. He does. Barr fakes the shot, puts it into the post to Braden Lenters. Lamar Barr with it again with the tough drive in, and he makes his first shot of the game over three different people. What a shot by Barr. Yes, yeah, strong showing there by Barr. Van Hutchison dishes it to Devontae Bennett. He's caught up at the top. You have Levi Makuna again. Five seconds on the shot clock. Let's see if he can get a shot up. He drives in, goes up left-handed, and he does. He makes the shot. Levi Makuna with the amazing drive, knowing how much time is on the clock. We have a defensive foul, a push on Niagara's Danny Lacoli, and we have a substitution for Niagara. Lacoli coming out for Johnny Richardson of Niagara. Mohawk inbounding the ball now. We have Braden Lenters inbounding it to Barr. Barr now at the top. Barr trying to find a man. Five seconds on the shot clock. Braden Lenters back to Barr at the three. Barr drives in, step back, and he does draw the pump fake foul on the step back. What a move by Barr. He's going to the line for two shots. Yeah, he had issues finding a teammate there to pass it to, and he knew he wasn't really going to get the shot off. So what do you do? You take the foul. <laughs> that was a smart, smart play by Barr. Knowing his man is right up on him. Throw the pump fake. Get him to bite. Barr makes the first free throw. And Barr converts on the second. Eight minutes left in this second frame. Johnny Richardson bringing the ball up for Niagara. And he dishes it to Van Hutchison Jr. Gives it back to Richardson. Richardson giving it in the post, and a very strong take by Niagara's Jordan McDonald with the N1. What a finish by McDonald. 
Fouls on Roman Calero. That will be his first foul of the game. Oh, and we have a rare air ball. Jordan McDonald air balls his free throw. Well, at least he made the end one, right? Yeah. <laughs> Lamar Barr bringing the ball up now very quickly. Still just a one possession game here. Niagara still leading it, though. Yep. Braden Lenters trying it to get it, trying to pass it down low. It gets deflected out of bounds and remains Mohawk basketball. Lenters in the corner trying to find a man. Passes it cross court. Gives it to Roman Calero who misses the three, but Lamar Barr with the nice put back. That's very good awareness. Nobody was trying to box him out. Levi Makuna passes it to Jordan McDonald who gives it to Hutchison Jr., who gives it into the post. Back to Jordan McDonald, who gets fouled. Oh, not a foul. They call it traveling violation. Travel before the foul. Kalura for Mohawk, bringing it up, giving it down low to Adrian Achona, who tries to get it back to Kalora and gets it intercepted. Niagara coming down. And a wild shot put up by Jordan McDonald. Almost gets the offensive rebound, doesn't quite. Mohawk now bringing it down. And, oh! And we have Roman Calero with the gimme layup and just can't quite make it. He is disappointed in himself after that one. Just shaking his head in disgust. Mohawk inbounding the ball back to Calero. And he can't make this layup either. Niagara with the rebound, bringing it down. Hutchison Jr. trying to cross over. Dishes it out. And what a play. Dishes it out to Johnny Richardson, who goes in for the Euro step and makes the layup. Braden Lenters trying to give it to the corner to his buddy Calero, and it gets intercepted. Jordan McDonald of Niagara bringing it down now. Dishes it to a wide open Gerard Richardson, and he makes the 14 to 15 foot jump shot. 26 to 21 for Niagara College. Five and a half minutes left in the second frame. Kalura calls for the screen, gets it, puts up a three, hits the backboard first and bounces right back out. Niagara gets the defensive rebound. They are fast breaking, trying to get Mohawk off, catch Mohawk off guard, and they do. Levi Makuna with the baseline jump shot. It's 28 to 21 for Niagara. Mohawk is going to have to get something going here. Lamar Barr with the three, and he can't quite make the three. Niagara, defensive rebound. Hutchison Jr. with the pass to the baseline, and another made shot for Levi Makuna. Timeout, Mohawk College, and the head coach wants to talk it over with his team. Yeah, and all of a sudden, a nine-point lead for the Niagara Knights here. And you know what? It's not even bad offense by Mohawk. It's the defensive side. They can't, it seems like they can't stop. The, even driving in the lane. Oh, most of Niagara's shots the, for the last few possessions have been within 15 feet. One of the keys to the game for Mohawk was to force them to shoot jump shots. They are not forcing them to shoot jump shots. And when they have been forcing them to shoot jump shots lately, they're hitting those jump shots. So it hasn't worked out quite to plan yet, but we'll continue. they're going to continue, and I'm sure they'll continue that game uh, game plan. Or maybe in the huddle, they'll change something up right now. Then again, um, Niagara has not made a three-point shot. No. This game yet. So 
for the most part, the key to the game, forcing them to make jump shots, is something that you do want to do. They have made the ones that they have taken so far. But let's see if they can stay hot for the entire game. <laughs> Only time will tell, Baxter. Mohawk with the ball now. Passing it down low to Dolmage. Foul on the floor against Dolmage. On number three, Niagara, Johnny Richardson. Neil Santos and Mohawk passing it into Dolmage off the off the inbounds play. And they call an offensive foul on Adrian Achona, who just looked like he was going up for the rebound. Yeah, that was you can never say for sure, but Van Hutchinson Jr. looked like he was almost a, a little bit of embellishment there. Either way, Niagara now has the ball. Bring it up. Johnny Richardson. Giving it to Makuna, who gives it to Jordan McDonald. And he puts it in. 32 to 21 for Niagara. Makuna for Mohawk College. Driving and takes a pull up jump shot from the baseline and can't quite make it. Niagara again with the ball, trying to fast break down. And he. And Kevin Cooper gets stripped. And then and then Adrian Achona gets stripped. Niagara going down. Trying to get the layup. An 11-point game here with just under four minutes remaining. Baxter, you like what you've seen so far from the Mountaineers? Like, like I said, um, it's not necessarily the offense. They need to step it up defensively. Niagara is getting into the lane way too easily. And it seems like even the backdoor cuts that Niagara is making, those passes seem to always have been getting through so far in this game. If it was up to me, I would. if I was the coach of, Ni or of Mohawk, I would maybe even think about switching to a 2-3 zone instead of playing man-to-man. -man. If you want to force the other team to take jump shots, I would recommend going zone. But... I'm not the head coach. No. And we have Mohawk making the layup. Neil Santos. Oh, and Neil Santos trying to get the, the interception, and he just misses it. And we have Johnny Richardson making the three for Niagara College. 36 to 23 for Niagara. And the ball going to Roman Calero, and he gets called for a traveling call. You got to put the ball down before you take a step. <laughs> yeah, there was multiple multiple travel calls being called here tonight, and this is so weird. Saw a lot of jump balls in the first game, and now a lot of travels. Niagara College swinging the ball around, trying to find the open man, and they get another backdoor cut. <laughs> Levi Makuna. Check that. Lee V. Makuna. I have been calling him Levi this entire game. His name is Levy. Levy Makuna. So we have Levy Makuna. Blame you. you can't blame you for that. That's, a, that's an easy <laughs> one to mix up. I won't lie. Levy Makuna going to the free throw line as he just misses the first one. It just rims out. See if he can make the second one. And he does. Levy Makuna going one for two. We have Neil Santos bringing it up now for Mohawk. Gets a screen from Dolmage. Santos gives it now to Dolmage. And Dolmage throws a careless pass down low. Easily gets intercepted. And a very nice play by Jordan McDonald of Niagara on the other end with the tough layup. 39 to 23 for Niagara.
Dolmage trying to find Santos. He does. Santos going in for the pull-up jump shot, and he makes the 10-foot jump shot. Santos. Two and a half minutes left. In this frame. And we have Adrian Achona. Letting his man go for the easy layup. 41 to 25 for Niagara now. Braden Lenters going in for the layup. And there's a charging call. Van Hutchison Jr. stepping in for Niagara to take the easy charge call. If they were to call anything else, I would have been very surprised. <laughs> that was a tough play. <laughs> that was a tough play in general. That, that was, was a tough charge to take. Yep. Mm -hmm. Much respect. Braden Lenters coming in there at 20 miles an hour. I'm surprised. You got to have guts being able to step in there and take that charge. Looking at some highlights from this quarter now. As Mohawks got to pick it, pick up the pace if they want to bring this closer before the halftime. They definitely don't want to get this out of reach because that can easily happen. I mean, you have Niagara who put up 41 points in the first quarter. No, a little bit, a little so, bit less than that. So <laughs> 41 points going into the half so far. Yeah. We still have just under two minutes left. Check that. <laughs> Check that. Going into halftime. Uh. Yeah, the, the women, we saw we saw a really big differential in the score as Mohawk. Mohawk put up over 80 points, but they hadn't even had 41 at the beginning, or at the, going into the half. So Niagara's on a scoring if frenzy so far. If this keeps up the way it does, I mean, Niagara's on pace for 82, and Mohawk's only on pace for 50. Yeah. So there, there's going to have to be something done on this defensive end here. And as I say that, Mohawk going into a full court press now. Johnny Richardson finding his men, Levy Makuna, who dishes it. Jared Richardson with a 15-foot jump shot. For the last few plays here, especially jump shots, Niagara players have been wide open. Like I've said, you want them to take jump shots, but you also have to be there to defend with a hand in the face. Yeah, or else anybody can hit those open it jump shots from 12 or 14. Exactly. Way too deep of a three there. Yeah. Braden Lenters puts up a three at the end of the shot clock and just airballs it. And we have a traveling violation on Niagara's McDonald. So we have Calero going in. No foul. It seems like he just slipped on the baseline. Oh, and Calero hustling. Gets the ball back. Mohawk Santos dishes it over to Makuna. Makuna pump fakes for three. Santos getting it back up at the top. Setting up a play. Dolmich coming up, setting a screen on the right side. Santos dribbling back and forth. And he makes the 17-foot jump shot. What a shot by Santos. 40 seconds left in this half. 43-27 to 27 for Niagara. Levy Makuna calling a play, getting a screen on both sides, going to the left, pump fakes from the three, and he dishes it out. Three seconds on the shot clock, shot put up, hits the rim, and bounces out of bounds. Mohawk. It seems Mohawk will have the last possession of the game. 20.5 seconds left of this half. Lamar Barr will inbound the ball to Santos. 17 seconds, Santos walking the ball up the court, calling a play, and Niagara's going into a 2-3 zone here, trying to not allow an outside shot. Seven seconds left, dishes it to Lamar Barr, who gives it back to Santos. Santos crossing over, Lamar Barr shoots the three and misses with two seconds left. Can't quite make the halftime buzzer like he did last game. No, that was exciting in its own right the f when we saw that last time around. But 
not as lucky this time. We go into the half. Mohawk College down by 16 points, 43 to 27. Looking a little bit ugly here in this first half. Just can't get anything going so far. Yeah, the first the first quarter was pretty even, and then the second quarter not so much. We're gonna take some a look at some highlights right now. Yeah, I mean, like you said, it was 16 to 11 after the first quarter, so only a five point game, and Niagara ended up spreading it to 16. So. They, get, they put up an, an extra 11 points. Mohawk, they cannot be having that. No, they got to get something going here. They got to get something together, and they, they need to get a little bit more consistency on the offensive side, and more importantly on the defensive side. Just They're giving them way too easy. I, I see that Mohawk is lacking on boxing out. There's too much ball watching. A shot goes up, and it seems like people are just watching it instead of trying to find their man and box them out to get the easy rebound. Yeah, well, whenever you and uh, the more of the rebounds you get, the more offensive rebounds you get, the more success you're going to have. That's just basically how it goes. And that's what Niagara is doing right now. The offensive boards are just killing Mohawk right now. Very good game at Mohawk College so far. As we go into halftime, we will see you guys. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be right back in, uh, in 13 minutes. Just a short little break here, and then we'll have the second half of action. 43-27 to 27 for the Niagara Knights over your Mohawk Mountaineers right here on Mohawk College of Basketball. Hello and welcome back here to the Mohawk Mountaineers as they take on the Niagara Knights. 43 to 27 after that first half of action. And Baxter, what are your takeaways from the first half? I mean, Niagara just has to step up their defensive game. Like I said before, boxing out is key. And just, they need to keep them taking jump shots, but a man needs to be there in the face in order to somewhat alter the shot. Yeah. All, all, most of their jump shots they've been taking, uh, they're wide open. Anything from like 15 to 20 feet, they're just wide open and no one's even there to do anything. I agree. I agree, Baxter. We're, looks like we're just about set to get the second half underway here, and we're looking forward to that. Yes, we are. Here we go. Niagara inbounding the ball. Let's get this started. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
And we are underway. Levy Macuno of Niagara with the ball. Passing it over to Hutchison Jr. Trying to cross over Barr. And Barr trying to strip him, but he gets the foul call. Hit on the arm. And Hutchison Jr. is going to the free throw line. Hutchison Jr. played a pretty key part for Niagara in the first half. A lot of nice buckets and a lot of nice hustling on offensive rebounds. Yeah, he didn't hit all of his shots, but he took them in a, in a large amount. So he did get lots of points after that first half. Yeah. Lamar Barr now with the ball, giving it to the corner. To Calero. Calero dishing it, faking the shot, and then passing it down low to Achona and gets the and one bucket. Achona now going to the free throw line for one. 15 point game now, 44 to 29 for Niagara. Let's see if Achona can cut it down to 14. And he cannot, but there's an offensive rebound and Mohawk maintains possession, dishes it over to Lamar Barr, and he hits the wide open three, Lamar Barr. And that is exactly what Mohawk needed. 12 point game now, 44 to 32 Niagara. Let's see if Mohawk can step up their defensive game. And Levy Machona, sorry, Levy Makuna. Answers back with a three of his own. And Lamar Barr with a strong take underneath with the left hand. There's three Niagara defenders there, and somehow he managed to finish that shot. And five quick points here for the Mohawk Mountaineers and for Lamar Barr getting them all. Yep. Levy Makuna with the ball out at the three. He puts up a he puts up the three and he misses. We have Calero bringing the ball up. Passes it to Braden Lenters. He's posting up, and he takes it. Goes for the reverse layup, and he misses. We have Kevin Cooper with the rebound. And Hutchison Jr. bringing the ball up. Lamar Barr covering him. Richardson Jr. Putting up the jump shot. And now we have Calero of Mohawk bringing the ball up. Braden Lenters puts up the three on the fast break, and it's a little bit short, but they get the offensive rebound. Braden Lenters in the post. And Lenters misses his jump shot. Now we have Levy Makuna bringing the ball up. He started breaking, but he pulled it out to set up a play. And we have a quick three put up by Hutchison Jr., and that is way long. Calero with the crossover. And that jump shot just rattles in and comes right back out. Hutchison Jr. bringing it up once again, puts up the little runner, and it's wide. Lamar Barr with the rebound, kicks it out to Makuna. We have Calero on the wing. Lamar Barr driving in himself, and he takes it in himself. Lamar Barr is really really turned it on in the second half so far. Six minutes and 55 seconds left in this quarter, 46 to 36 Niagara. Lamar Barr gambles on the steal, doesn't get it. And we have Adrian Achona committing the foul and Hutchison Jr. going to the free throw line for two. First shot is good for Hutchison Jr. Niagara's also making a lot of their free throws, whereas Mohawk is just not doing as well. They've missed, a, they've just missed a lot more. And off the second free throw miss, Niagara gets the offensive rebound, and Jordan McDonald put gets the put back. Calero driving baseline, Lamar Barr. Kicking it back to Calero in the corner. 
Lenters. Cross court pass to Barr. Barr putting up the runner and he makes it. Lamar Barr is putting the team on his back right now. Yeah, it really looks like he found a rhythm here coming into this second half. I don't know if that's a boost of energy from the coach or if that's just him saying, you know what, guys, we need to get going here. Well, he is the leader of this team, and I think he is kind of taking responsibility on himself to try to get his team going. Substitution being made. Emmanuel Makuna coming out for Roman Calero. And we have Neil Santos coming in for Adrian Achona. Kevin Cooper makes his first free throw for Niagara. Second free throw is short. And Lenters collects the rebound. Calero now bringing the ball up. Giving it out to Barr. Barr puts up a three, and he misses. Lenters tries to go in for the strong offensive rebound, and bodies flying everywhere. Ends up being a jump ball. And it stays Niagara basketball. Baxter, now that we're well underway in this game. How do you feel the strategies have worked for each of these teams? Uh, well, let's, start with Mo let's start with Mohawk. Well, I mean, the strategy, it was all defensive. And Niagara's coming off their Christmas break. This is their first game since the Christmas break. And it seems like they have shaken off that rust. They are up 12 right now, 50 to 38 with five minutes and 50 seconds left. And it, they show no signs of slowing down at all. Barr putting up a runner and gets blocked, kicking it out to Santos. Santos drives in, kicks it back out to Barr, who kicks it to Lenters in the corner. Lenters trying to post up, kicks it out to Barr for three. And Barr dishes it down low to Calero. Nice pass by Barr to Calero. Calero gets the foul call on the head. Calero is going to the free throw line for two shots. Calero has also been very active in this game, everywhere on the court. Just another player where you can feel his presence whenever he's playing. Makes the first one and makes the second one. Ten-point game now. Hutchison Jr. bring it up, gets a screen on both sides, thinks about the three, doesn't take it, drives in by himself, and then he puts up a little floater, misses it. Santos with the off with the defensive rebound, kicking it out to Calero. Calero puts up a three, air balls it, tipped back in by a Mohawk player to Barr. Barr tries to give it to Calero on the baseline, and he just cannot control it. Substitution being made now by Niagara. Niagara's Danny Lacoli comes in for Johnny Richardson of Niagara. Niagara setting up a play. Levy Makuna asking for a screen, gets it. Dishes to the roller. Jordan McDonald can't make the layup, but Kevin Cooper is there for the offensive putback. Niagara coach calling for his team to get a stop, calling for defense. Calero with the spin move, spins baseline. What a shot by Calero. Nothing but net on the baseline. Nice, nice fadeaway. Hutchison Jr. trying to cross Calero over. He does, goes baseline, and goes with the strong reverse underneath. What is finished by Hutchison Jr. Santos driving it in. Lenters with a nice floater on the baseline. It is 54 to 44 for Niagara. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in this third quarter. Nothing but net. 
for Levy Makuna for Niagara. He is he has just been on point this game. Lamar Barr left open wide open three and he can't make it. He doesn't miss many of those, but he's been a little bit off this game so far from outside the outside the perimeter. Hutchison Jr. goes in for the spin move. Tries to get the layup. Santos goes for the strip, but ends up getting him on the arm. Lamar Barr coming out of the game now for Emmanuel Makuna. We also have John Dolmage coming in for Braden Lenters. Speaking of uh, speaking of Lamar Barr, it's been really huge. 138 points. That's that seems like a lot, but if you look at Van Hutchen, he's got even more than that. 188 points so far. So the 1A versus 1B for these two teams is uh, definitely. You can definitely see the difference, but it's also just because. Niagara seems like a high-octane offense. They like, to, so far in this game, it seems like they love to fast break, they love to run. The more you do that, the more points you should be able to put up. And that might be a reason why Van Hutchison Jr. has 188 and Jordan McDonald has a total of 172 on the season. Mohawk now bringing the ball up, and there is a foul committed against Kalua. Kalura. Santos gets the ball at the top, looking for a man to pass to. Can't find anyone, so he's calling for a screen. Passes it to Makuna, who passes to Dolmage, and Dolmage makes the 15-foot jump shot. Hutchison Jr. with the crossover on Santos. Gets him to stutter. And Niagara trying to pass the ball down low. Can't get it. Fumbled around. Calero with the ball now. Looking for Dolmage in the post. Gets it there. And can't quite make the layup. So Niagara will get possession. Hutchison Jr. coming in against Santos, the shorter defender. Tries to put up a floater and can't make it. They call, they call a foul on the floor against Niagara's Kevin Cooper. And some, some, some confusion here. Some yeah, some miscommunication. The referees said that the foul was on number 13 of Mohawk. But there is no 13 on Mohawk on the court right now. So they just want to know who the foul was so on. So just a miscommunication here. They called the foul on number 13 on Niagara, Kevin Cooper. So Mohawk will retain possession. Santos now bringing the ball up, passes it to Makuna on the wing. Very good call there by head coach Brian Jonker. And Calero puts up a three and drills it. Eight-point game now, 57-49 to 49 for Niagara. Niagara's coach starting to get a little bit on edge now as Mohawk's coach is trying to clap his team on to get some energy going. And Mohawk going to the 2-3 zone. Making them take a jump shot, they do and miss. Calero now shoots another three, can't make that one. Niagara saves the ball into their own player. Levy Makuna almost gets stripped by Santos. Niagara basketball. Hutchison Jr. inbounding the ball to Makuna. Makuna of Niagara gives it to Devontae Bennett. Gives it back to Makuna, who swings it over to Jordan McDonald, who gives it to the corner to Hutchison Jr. And Hutchison Jr. tries a cross-court pass, gets deflected, and they call it jump ball. 
It will remain Niagara basketball. There has been a lot of jump balls in both of these basketball games so far. A lot of good hustle by both teams. And a quick three put up, and they can't make it. Mohawk gets possession. Santos bringing the ball in. Pump fakes and gets the man to jump. Jared Richardson just fell for that pump fake. And now Santos is going to the line for two shots. And what a pump fake by Santos. Yeah, Mohawk's been doing a really good job of when they see they've lost that opportunity to take the original shot. They'll just draw the contact and get to the line. Yeah. The Niagara basketball players need to start staying on their feet. You don't need to jump at a shooting player for it to be good defense. If you can just rush at him with both your hands up and even just get one hand in his face. Well, that, especially when you're Neil Santos, you're only 5'8", okay? A lot of these guys don't need to jump to block him, but still, he's drawing contact. Santos with the interception pass. Looks to Calero. Calero goes in for the reverse layup. What a bucket by Calero. After the bucket, the Niagara coach called for a timeout, but the play kept on running. They finally stopped it. 50 seconds left in this quarter. 57 to 53 for Mohawk. Mohawk is making a nice comeback in this game. Yeah, we said they had to change something up. And on, you know what? Looking at... Looking at their uh, strategy of the forcing jump shots, and you said earlier in the you said earlier in the night that they had to switch to the two three zone, and I think they've done that now, and they're seeing a lot more um, they're seeing a lot more results on the defensive side after doing that. Yeah, well, the f when they were playing man, they were just getting beat off the dribble, and people were failing to rotate over. People are failing to help. Helping man switch on screens, that wasn't happening. So I think the Mohawk coach realized that, put him in a 2-3 zone, and yeah, the results are starting to show. Niagara's jump shots are not falling, and it's now a four-point game. Play is about to resume. Just under a minute left, and... Mohawk. 51.8 seconds. Mohawk is going to be trying to get, maybe they can tie this game up before the end of the quarter. Very un, like, very hard to do, but it's definitely a possibility. Levy Makuna with the ball. And a turnover. Van Hutchison. Disbelief. Just The ball just kind of slipped out of his hands and... Went out of bounds. Makuna giving it to Dolmage. Dolmage with the baseline jump shot. Can't make it. But it is tipped off a Niagara player. Will remain Mohawk basketball. Lamar Barr will be inbounding this ball. High pass into Dolmage. Dolmage giving it back in the post to Lamar Barr. Tries the step back jump shot and drills nothing but net. Make it a one possession game now. 57 to 55. 23 seconds left in this quarter. Makuna of Niagara dishes it in to Jordan McDonald, who dishes it back out to Devontae Bennett, who cannot make the three. Nine seconds left in this quarter. Let's see if they could tie it. Makuna drives in, dishes it back out to Barr. Barr puts up the jump shot, and he can't make it. And that is the end of the quarter. 57 Niagara, 55 Mohawk. What a quarter. What a game. Mohawk pulling to within two points now after being down a whopping amount after the half. Down five after the first quarter, down 16 at half. And now we're only down two going into the fourth. Something definitely happened in that change room. Yeah, I'm not sure. Play. It's got to be more than just the 2-3 offense, too. Oh. Or defense, sorry. Yeah. It's got to it's be. 
It's got to be something mental. As we take a look at some highlights here, as Mohawk getting a, getting back into this game with some nice shots, some nice plays. Some nice plays from Niagara as well as they hit the outside shot there. But Mohawk comes right back with one. And Dolmage. Yeah. Dolmage. The big man's had a couple nice shots tonight. Hasn't Didn't really do too much in the first half, but making his presence heard in this third quarter. Making some key jump shots and some key rebounds. It also seems like Mohawk has finally, seems like they've decided to box out. Not started to, but box out more than they have been. Yeah, that was definitely an issue for them going into the half, was that they're... All those back at backdoor passes were just getting uh, we were, we're getting through, and not only that, but the, uh, the the offensive rebounds, the number of offensive rebounds, and all the defensive rebounds they didn't get was outstanding. It was probably a big factor in why it was a 16-point lead going into the half. And also going into that two-three zone, um, the Mohawk coach probably also noticed about those backdoor cuts and how they're so easily. But if you cram five people in the key, there's you no, know, yeah, you're there's not no way you're never going to get those. able to make it through there. Uh. All right, start of the fourth quarter here, 57-55 for Niagara. Mohawk basketball, Makuna with the ball. Driving in, trying to get a quick first shot and drills it. Wasting no time getting this game tied up Tie here to start the game. fourth quarter. And this... Seems like it's going to turn out to be a nail-biter. Took the words right out of my mouth, Baxter. Hutchison Jr. going in for the hard drive, gets fouled, and he will be going to the line for two shots. And the first one is short off front rim. See if he can make the second. And he does make the second. A one-point game now. Santos bringing the ball up. Calero on the wing. Gets a screen by Dolmage. Calero driving in. Trying to draw contact. Can't. Dolmage shoots a three and just grazes the rim. But they do end up getting the offensive foul. And Calero with the putback. Mohawk now leads the game by one. 59-58. And Hutchison Jr. trying to do too much, turns the ball over. Lamar Bart bringing it down, tries to give it up for the alley-oop to Makuna and gets deflected out of bounds. That was a good attempt, and it would have been a <laughs> statement marker at this that point in the game. That would have been a monstrous dunk. But no luck. But you know what? Still got the ball back, so it's okay. Santos looks like he's going to inbound this one. Lamar Barr with another bucket. Another bucket. Lamar Barr is a huge difference maker in this second half. He, he knows he's a huge part of this team, and he has taken it upon himself to finally step up. Also, Dolmage. John Dolmage of Mohawk College has also stepped up big time. I think it's because of them that they have gotten this lead now. I'd have to agree. Taking a second there, look at Brian Junker. He was angry over that. Didn't he wanted wanted the goaltending yes, wanted offense. the goaltending call. But instead there was a put back dunk. And a nice running layup layup by Braden Lenters with 3 seconds left on the shot clock. Lamar Barr hustling back on defense. And a tipped by Braden Lenters. Mohawk with the basketball. Makuna bringing it up. Oh, and a massive block. Lenters tried to go in for the layup. Look for the foul afterwards as well. And Levy Makuna trying to do a huge cross-court pass. Doesn't make it. And Van Hutchison barely gets his hand on it to throw it back in bounds off of a Mohawk player. And through all of this high-impact uh, high game here, we got a 
Mohawks taking the lead now with three points, 63 to 60. And a missed three by Johnny Ra Richardson. So Mohawk will keep this lead. And what a pass. What a pass by Santos. And Lenters cannot make the layup. I don't think there was a man within 10 feet of him. No, there wasn't. He needed that one, especially to make it a two-possession game. Yeah, you could see he's disgusted with himself. Thought about slamming it for a second, changed his mind to go for the easy layup, and he still s didn't seem to sink it. Missed by Niagara. Santos brings the ball up. Pick by Lamar Barr. Santos goes the opposite way, goes for a strong layup against the bigger man and gets the foul call. Foul being called on number 13, Kevin Cooper of Niagara. Santos being the smaller man. And working for him here. And still has the guts to go up against the bigger man. Oh, and every single time. Doesn't seem to matter how big they are. You can just see in the way that Santos plays, size does not matter. It's, he's more aggressive than a lot of these big guys. As far as, you, as far as he's concerned, he's the biggest guy out on the court. Oh, so. for sure. And he's definitely playing like it. Santos makes the first one. We have uh, no Mario coin sound effects for made free throws this game. Yeah, I completely had forgot about that. That was your, one of your favorite parts oh, of the game last yeah. time. I want to hear some coins. Where's the sound guy? <laughs> Seven minutes left in this game. 65 to 60 for Mohawk. Niagara basketball. Hutchison Jr. swings it over to Levy Makuna. And Mohawk goes back to their 2-3 zone, which was helping them that entire third quarter. And they, they end up getting a turnover. Van Hutchison Jr. steps on the baseline trying to go for a, a reverse layup. Mohawk basketball, Calero bringing the ball up. Trying to find a man here. Calero gets a screen on his left side. Trying to drive in by himself. Goes for the strong take. Can't quite make the left-handed and one. He's going to the line for two. Six and a half minutes left here in this game. It's, it's winded up being a close one here. 65 to 60 for Mohawk. Back and forth game so far. Wasn't a whole lot of lean changes, but it sure was back and forth. Now Mohawk's looking to try and take this one. Calero misses the first one. Actually a rare miss for Mohawk from the free throw line. They were eight for 10 from the free throw line in the entire first half. Makes the second one, 66 to 60 for Mohawk. Levy Makuna gives it to Hutchison Jr. Hutchison Jr. trying to cross over, can't get anywhere, passes it back out to Makuna, who, who gives it over to Jordan McDonald, who air balls the baseline jump shot. Calero coming, driving down by himself, and he can't make the layup. Gets the offensive rebound, Lamar Barr with a giant three-point shot. What a shot by Barr to put Mohawk College up by nine, 69 to 60. Did the crowd ever enjoy that one? On their feet after that big three-pointer. Levy Makuna of Niagara goes up for the layup, misses. So now, oh, Makuna of Mohawk puts up a three, can't make that one. Niagara gets the rebound, they're coming down, trying to get a nice shot off. Devontae Bennett. Gets a wide open look from three, but can't make the shot. He's disappointed at himself. Clapping his hands together in disappointment. Substitution being made. Niagara basketball on the baseline. Mohawk still in their 2-3 zone. Makuna of Niagara puts up a three, and it is short. Lamar Barr with the rebound. Santos now coming down. Very slowly, he's trying to set up a play. Calling the plays out. Gives it over to Roman Calero. 
Calero driving in. And he thought he got stripped. But it went off his legs, went out of bounds, and now a timeout from Niagara College. Head coach does not like what he is seeing. It was just 57 to 53. Yeah, quickly. Like two and a half minutes ago. Quickly. And Mohawk now, jumped out. Mohawk is up by nine, 69 to 60. Five minutes left in this game. And if I was the coach of Mohawk, I would stay in the 2 3 zone for most of the rest of the game, anyways. It is working flawlessly right now. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Like, especially whenever they've tried the man to man, it didn't work. They went to the 2 3 zone, it did work. They went back, eh, didn't really work. And now they put it back into force, and it's. It's pretty obvious what's the smarter what's the smarter decision here for defense. Now that Mohawk does have the lead, the crowd is getting more into this game. A lot more lively. After that Lamar bar three, we had a lot of fans stand up in the bleachers here. So it's nice to see everyone getting the energy back. That is the end of the timeout, but both teams taking their time getting back out on the court. Each team getting a warning. And Niagara basketball. Mohawk College running a type of half-court press, it looks like. Niagara easily beats it. Hutchison Jr. now up at the top. Gives it to Makuna. Makuna looking for a man. Cross court pass. Makuna with a deep three at the end of the shot clock. Oh my goodness. Makuna with a huge three. That must have been at least six feet deep. Don't really have a choice in that in that matter. End of the shot clock, but amazing shot. Yeah, you just got to kind of put it up and hope for the best. Calero, Roman Calero trying to drive in and get the bucket, and he can't. So Hutchison with the rebound trying to break the press by himself and with a strong take by Hutchison. And Mohawk with a quick timeout. Two quick buckets. Two quick buckets, a three and a two by Niagara. And the Mohawk coach just wants to stop that momentum right away. 69 to 65 for Mohawk College. Four minutes and 15 seconds left in this game. Yeah, this is lining up for an exciting, exciting finish here, Baxter. It is a nail biter, that is for sure. I was saying before, rebounds would be a key part to this game. And going into the half, Niagara actually out-rebounded Mohawk College by six rebounds. It has turned around now. And Mohawk is now out-rebounding Niagara, and it shows. Mohawk is going to look here to try to get something going. That, that quick five-point run by Niagara was a little bit too much for Mohawk's liking. Yeah, it's still a two-possession game now, but they had a nine-point lead there. So they definitely don't like four compared to nine, obviously. Four minutes and five seconds left in this game. Lamar Barr tries to go up for the tough layup. Gets blocked. And we have Devontae Bennett going in for the tough layup. Gets fouled. By, Ro by Roman Calero of Mohawk College. Substitution being made. Emmanuel Makuna coming in for Roman Calero. 
Devontae Bennett at the line, shooting two. Misses the first one to the left. Still a four-point game. Let's he see if he can convert on number two. And he does. Three-point game now. Santos trying to fast break. Gives it to Makuna. Makuna looking for a dish out. Throws up a pump fake. Man bites on it, but he just can't quite convert. So Niagara gets the defensive rebound there. They're now bringing it down. Hutchison Jr. with a spin move around Lamar Barr. And what an and one by Hutchison Jr. Lamar Barr just reaching in a little bit too much and gets him on the arm. Yeah, Lamar, I think, was trying to say that was a travel and not a foul, but he looked at the ref and was trying to say, hey, I didn't touch him. But the ref saw something differently. Looking to tie it up here. And Hutchison Jr. can't convert on the free throw. So still, just Mohawk still has the lead. One point. 69-68. Santos bringing the ball up slowly. Trying to set up a play. Gives it to Calero. Calero calls for a screen. Goes the opposite way. Puts up a nice running layup off the backboard. Calero. Three-point game now. Johnny Richardson. Bringing it up. Johnny Richardson gets it back. Levy Makuna giving it to the post. Johnny Richardson gets it back. Puts up a three. Can't get it to go. Lamar Barr gets the rebound. Gives it to Santos. Two-on-one situation. Santos gives it to Calero. And Calero gets blocked. But a nice offensive rebound. A nice offensive effort by Makuna. Back to a five point game now, Mohawk leading. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in this game. Levy Makuna looking for Richardson Jr. Can't get it to him, so he dishes it off to Jordan McDonald who gives it back out to Johnny Richardson. And what a spin move and finish by Jordan McDonald. Two minutes and 20 seconds left. This is a three-point game. Lamar Barr has the ball out on the elbow at the three-point line. Drives in, kicks it out to Santos. Santos pump fakes, kicks it back out to Lamar Barr, and Barr cannot convert on the three-point shot. It will be Niagara basketball. Brian, Brian Jonker calling. He says he, his team needs a stop here, and he's not lying. They do. They have the lead, but this is, this is the nitty gritty. This is when you need stops. Under two minutes left. Johnny Richardson of Niagara puts up a three, shoots it long, and an and one. Van Hutchison Jr. It looked like. Wow, it looked, it looked like an over the back. It for looked all like. Yeah, it looked like Hutchison Jr. jumped over Lamar Barr's back in order to get that rebound. But the ref says that he, his box out wasn't like was incorrect, and from the box out being incorrect, that it can't possibly be an over the back. The ref saw that Lamar Barr undercut him and not that Richardson tried to jump over him. Call could have easily went either way. Just a quick little talk over by Mohawk. Substitution being made. Roman Calero coming back into the game. And this would be a huge win for Mohawk College. Like I said before, they have a 7-6 and six record. Niagara's at eight and three. So this would be such a huge win for Mohawk, especially in the rankings. Just catching up a full game on Niagara is a much needed win. Lamar Barr trying to drive baseline and a blocking call on Jordan McDonald of Niagara. 
Roman Calero quickly got subbed in and then quickly got taken back, right back out. We got Brayden Lenters entering the game for Calero. Tried to get the ball in here. And Lamar Barr tried to get the ball in, couldn't find a man, so he forced it, and it got intercepted. Hutchison Jr. driving it himself and getting the layup. Tie game. Oh, check that. 75 for Niagara, 73 for Mohawk. And Emmanuel Makuna looks like he injured his knee a little bit. He seems to be limping, but he's still on the court, wincing a bit, but it looks like he's going to play through it. Tight games like these, you don't want to be taken off the court, Baxter. A minute and 20 seconds left. Niagara leads the game by two. Santos drives in, gets stripped, but the referees call a foul. No bonus. No bonus quite yet. Mohawk retains possession. A minute 18 left. Two-point game. Let's see what they do here. Santos calling the play. Looking for a man. Can't find anyone. Lamar Barr driving in with the fake, and he gets blocked. Calero gets it back, puts up a three, and Santos with the huge offensive rebound. Lamar Barr passing it back out to Calero. One minute left in this game. Santos driving in himself, gets the foul call, and he will be going to the line for two. Blocking call. Oh, wow. A blocking call on Niagara's Johnny Richardson. He does not agree with that call at all. So Santos going to the line for two. Let's see if he can convert on the first one. And he does convert on the first one. Free throw number two. And he ties this game up at 75-75. We are in the last minute of play here, folks. Hutchison Jr. crossing Santos over, taking it himself, and hits the bucket. 77-75 for Niagara. Calero now bringing the ball down, calling for a screen, doesn't get it. Dishes it off to Santos. Santos crossing over, trying to cross over Johnny Richardson. Lamar Barr with the ball. Out at the three-point line. Tried to take it himself, and he tries to spin move, gets stripped. Hutchison Jr. now getting it. And, and in, an intentional foul. I think they're going to call that on the floor before the layup. A huge collision, though. Yeah, Santos pulled up by his teammates there. I think the players thought that it was a continuation, so they continued the play. I believe the foul was on the floor, but they, Mohawk is now in bonus. First three free throw is made. It is now a three-point game. Sinks this one, and it'll be a two-possession game here, which is huge with this Not amount of time what left. what Mohawk wants right now. And he converts on the second one. This is a four-point game, 79-75, to 75, Mohawk College. Calls a timeout. 38.1 seconds left in this game. This is a nail biter, folks. Yeah, huge timeout here and a huge discussion is gonna have to be had here. Mohawk, it's gonna, gonna go for a miracle. They're gonna go for a miracle here. 38.1 <laughs> seconds, it's I, not quite a miracle. I wouldn't quite put it to that, that spot, but I mean, they're, they need to get something going. There's 38 seconds left in the game, a two-possession game. I assume Mohawk is going to try to get a quick shot so that they can get the last possession of the game. If there is over 24 seconds by the time Niagara gets the ball back, then Mohawk will have the last possession of the game. So you think they'll try and go for a two and then a three afterwards to win the game? The, I, that's, that's, your, that's your guess. They're, they're going to go for two. If they can get a two, they will go for two. Last resort is a three, but if they can get a two point, make it a, if they can get a two pointer, make it a two point game and then get a stop. That's, that's going to be the key because they only need a two point to tie instead of three to tie. Calero about to throw the ball in. Mohawk ball. Players trying to get open. Passes it in. 
and a three put up. Oh my goodness. Braden Lenters drills the three. One point game, 30 seconds left. The big man comes in clutch. Oh, Hutchison Jr. driving in by himself. Makuna fakes the three. Hutchison just trying to make do this offense by himself. Calls for the clear out, crossing over. And a charging call. Braden Lenters with a massive, massive charging call. What a step in for Lenters. Mohawk basketball. One point game. 15.3 seconds left. This is the game that we wanted. A nice entertaining game. Something for the fans. Oh my. What an insane game. Again, we go back. Mohawk was up 69 to 60. They gave up a nine point lead, which obviously isn't something they wanted to do. They wanted to close it out. They couldn't quite do it. Niagara came back. They are now up by one point. Mohawk has the chance to win the game right here. Now, the question is, are they going to try to go for a quick shot? Or are they going to try and wait for a last shot? They're going to take whatever they can get. But I'm wondering what the game plan is for Mohawk Mountaineers. Timeout over, Niagara coming out on the court. Mohawk Mountaineers coming out on the court. Fifteen point three seconds, folks. Mohawk basketball. One point game. Calero has the ball. Looking for Santos. Can't get it into Santos. Gives it into Braden Lenters. 13 seconds left. Braden Lenters gives it to Lamar Barr. Lamar Barr driving in. He's fumbling it. Gives it to Braden Lenters. Five seconds left. Lamar Barr puts up the three point shot. Misses it. M Mohawk looking for the offensive foul. Looking for the offensive board, sorry. They cannot get it. So Niagara with the defensive rebound. Mohawk had to foul. Niagara going to the free throw line because they are in bonus. 1.7 seconds left. And Hutchison Jr. misses the first one. If he makes the second one, it'll be a two-possession game. Or, sorry, a two-point game. 1.7 seconds left. Mohawk has no timeouts left. Here we go. Long score shot. Oh, and hits the backboard, and he cannot make it. Niagara College closes this game out. They win the game by one point. Van Hutchison Jr. just put the team on his back in that fourth quarter. Mohawk, I think once they got that little bit of a lead, just started to relax a little bit. And that is where Niagara thought they would take advantage. What a tough loss, tough, tough loss to Mohawk College. They now move to seven and seven on the season. And Niagara did have a three game win streak, now on a four game win streak, and they moved to nine and three. Just a disappointing loss. And a couple of the players are walking back to the dressing room with their heads down. And you know what? They shouldn't feel bad about this game. Yeah, they gave up the lead, but you know what? They played hard. They got the lead. They could have closed it out, but they just couldn't do it. It was a good adjustment by the Mountaineers head coach to go into the 2-3 zone. That was definitely a game changer for them. But Niagara Knights did manage 
to adjust, hit some needed outside shots, and again, Van Hutchison Jr. unconscious in this last quarter. And now we are going over to my friend Cody Lake. Cody Lake here alongside head coach of the Mohawk Mountaineers, Brian Jonker. Brian, uh, you guys had a really nice comeback there in the third quarter. You fell short just by a little bit. What got that comeback started there in the second half? Well, we played with a lot more energy in the third quarter than we did first half. We didn't play with much energy at all. Third, third quarter, we uh, got after it. We did a good job on the boards, and we got the ball moving on offense, so it created easier shots. Uh, so after that, obviously things didn't go quite as you wanted to. Came right down to the end. What was your focus there when it came down to the end? It was a really tight game going to the end. You're just trying to get, trying to find ways to get good shots, and then on the defensive end, you're trying to stop the ball. So. Okay. Well, you guys didn't come up with this one, but hopefully uh, you'll come back out stronger the next time. Uh, good luck and keep doing what you guys have been doing. All right. Thank you. And that was Cody interviewing the head coach of the Mohawk Mountaineers. He, they, he did have a good game plan. He said they did get some things going, but just couldn't quite finish it out down the stretch. I mean, they played really well. Just couldn't quite get those last shots. What a game. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We will see you guys next time. Thank you.